Carl Sandburg wrote about Chicago as a city of big shoulders, fierce, and proud to be alive. Perhaps because Chicago is a city that continually renews itself. Chicagoans have always used design to shape their city and their quality of life. The sparsely settled banks of the river were home to a native people called the Potawatomi, who traded in furs and grains. Beginning in the early 19th century, the Potawatomi began to cede land to American and European settlers through a series of treaties that culminated in the 1833 Treaty of Chicago, which forced the tribe to move west of the Mississippi River. Chicago was incorporated as a town that very year with only a few hundred citizens. But its destiny as a metropolis was soon set in 1836, when construction began on a canal linking the Great Lakes to the Mississippi River, thereby connecting Chicago to every vital port in America. Its population exploded, and Chicago became the country's fastest growing city, earning the name Lightning City for its crackling energy, and Porkopolis for its primary industry, meatpacking. The city's proliferating railroads carried machinery, commodities, and lumber out of the city and brought goods and hundreds of thousands of immigrants back. By 1870, Chicago's population had swelled to 300,000. To accommodate a burgeoning population, local builders employed a house frame made of lightweight lumber and nails as easy to set aloft as a balloon. This balloon frame was employed for residences, warehouses, and institutional buildings and aided the city's rapid growth. On October 8, 1871, a fire sparked and roared into an inferno a mile wide and three miles long north to south. When the winds abated two days later, more than 17,000 buildings were destroyed. 300 people had died, and a third of the population, 100,000 people, were homeless. Newspapers called the Chicago Fire the night America burned. The immediate task was to rebuild a fireproof city. Surviving structures offered clues. The wooden balloon frame buildings had aided the fire spread, while brick, stone, and terracotta withstood the flames. Chicago architects quickly put these materials to work. Emerging innovations, fireproofed iron, steel frames, safe passenger elevators, allowed Chicago buildings to climb above five stories. The rise of the skyscraper had begun. Louis Sullivan, with Denmark Adler, pioneered structural innovations and fashioned elaborately ornamented buildings. As Chicago emerged, reborn, its architects and business leaders came up with grand plans for re-envisioning the city. At the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition, Daniel Burnham showcased his vision for Chicago as an orderly and humane place to work and to live. Burnham's 1909 plan of Chicago was a culmination of lessons learned at the exposition. The plan offered Chicago a blueprint for growth. To this day, Chicago is renowned for Burnham's triumphs, the multi-level Wacker Drive, an emerald necklace of boulevards and parks, a lakefront free and clean, This influential urban design spurred an unparalleled building boom in the years after World War I and before the Great Depression. Evolving materials and innovative shapes produced architectural icons.
In Daniel Barnum's Shaped the Cityscape, Frank Lloyd Wright's Prairie School designs created an ideal of the American suburban home. How people lived on the inside by pioneering the open floor plan and how it looked from the outside. Global unrest brought Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, who influenced generations of architects to shed historic styles and embrace a design approach of less is more. World War II brought new manufacturing facilities to Chicago that laid the groundwork for subsequent development. But by 1950, manufacturing jobs in the city had started to end. Chicago was transitioning to an information and service-based economy. The 1950s and 60s witnessed a massive reshaping of the downtown in terms of scale and size. Immigrant and working class neighborhoods were raised to make way for new planned developments and highways. Meanwhile, Chicago's downtown was being redefined. Architects pushed the height limits with modernist steel and glass buildings. In the 1970s and 80s, postmodern buildings drew inspiration from their surrounding environment and the visual language of earlier Chicago buildings while incorporating bold, playful ornamentation and dramatic symbolism. But as the 20th century came to a close and the population of Chicago neared 3 million residents, the city was faced with a new challenge how to use design to remake the city's fabric once again, this time to better serve the needs of city residents. The success of Millennium Park, which brought together architecture, landscape design, art, music, and family activities, has reignited the downtown living experience. Public spaces have become fundamental elements of a vibrant, livable city in the 21st century. Chicago is a global leader in the smart city movement, gathering varied kinds of data to inform decisions and planning. As it has been in the past, Chicago is a model and laboratory for cities everywhere. Chicago. The city of architecture. Come explore it with us. You'll never see the city the same way.